Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Barika Season. Today we're going to discuss developing conceptual framework and theoretical framework. So when we say conceptual framework, it's a basic structure that serves as a mental window of the researcher because it depicts the research design and the relationship of the variables involved. A conceptual framework is first known as conceptual mapping, which was originally developed by Joseph Nona in 1984. It is a written or visual presentation that explains either geographically or in narrative form the main things to be studied, the key factors, concepts, or variables, and the presumed relationship among them. A conceptual paradigm is sometimes referred to as research paradigm of the study. It is a semantic diagram or illustration depicting what the concept of the study is all about. If it is already mapped out or diagrammed, it becomes a framework a blueprint or a plan. Conceptual framework might be in the form of flowcharts, tree diagrams, shape-based diagram, triangles, concentric circles, overlapping circles, mind maps, and software systems. So here are the guidelines in using conceptual framework. Number one. Always draw the semantic diagram, illustration, and explain the relationship of the boxes, circles, arrows, and everything in the diagram for the reader to clearly understand its significance. From a given example, we can see a diagrammatic representation of the conceptual framework. It shows what the concept of the study is all about. The study was conceptualized through the use of the input process output approach that includes the following. For the input, teachers' assessment on the extent to which the supervisory practices of school administration were realized. For the process, analysis of teachers' assessment of the outcomes of the supervisory practices. And for the output, supervisory action plan towards A, enrichment of supervisory program, B, improve evaluation of teaching situation, C, improve selection and utilization of teaching materials and methodologies, D, strengthen technological and support system for pupils, E, continuing professional development of teachers, and F, enhance communication process. Next guideline for using conceptual framework. If the variables are to be related, identify the independent variables, dependent variables, and the relationship of the variables. Now, study the conceptual framework given below. From the given example, the conceptual framework here utilizes the independent-dependent model used in behavioral sciences. In the context of the study, the identified independent variables are the following factors affecting the behavior of pupils in the public school setting, family, community, teachers, and learning environment. The dependent variables include the behavioral problems within the public school setting, internalizing behavior, inattentiveness, uncooperative and inactive, and externalizing behavior aggression, disobedience, and impulsiveness. Another example of a conceptual framework from the study conducted by CISON entitled Experienced Teachers' Understanding of Environmental Education, a Formative Evaluation. This study was conceptualized through the use of the problem-free approach that includes the following identifying the crow problem which is the insufficient knowledge of the secondary school teachers in environmental science education its proximate causes such as educational background and proliferated exploited teaching load the underlying causes such as inadequate resources insufficient environmental science education units 
inadequate number of environmental science educators, etc. They identify core problems, give significant effect on poor and low teaching process in environmental science education, resulting to the poor achievement of students in learning environmental science education. Another example of a research paradigm from the same study conducted by CISON, Experience, Teachers' Understanding of Environmental Education, a Formative Evaluation. Considering the important role of teachers in the development of teaching learning process, three factors were identified to evaluate their knowledge in understanding environmental science education. The interrelationship of these factors are presented in Figure 2, or Research Paradigm. There were three predictors identified in the study such as teachers' demographic profile, learning resources, and issues on environmental education. This will correlate on the teacher's level of understanding on environmental science education. Furthermore, the focus of the study was to evaluate their knowledge as well as their respective interests and understanding of the environmental education. It analyzed and examined how environmental knowledge was related to demographic factors identified. The use of environmental knowledge questionnaire was to assess the respondents' knowledge of current environmental issues and learning resources. The personal data form consisted of Demographic questions concerning teachers, gender, educational attainment, and subject taught in the last six years. Another guideline in using conceptual framework, the mapping or framework must be understood by any reader since it is the blueprint of the study. From the given research paradigm, we can see that the objective of the study is to examine the extent and impact of the leadership preparation program for school principals and to investigate the knowledge, disposition, and performance of school principals. And the last guideline in using conceptual framework, a figure number below the diagram must be indicated as a caption. So here is an example. As you can see, for our given research paradigm, there is a figure number below the diagram. Now let us proceed to theoretical framework. So let us first define what are theories. So theories are statements about the mechanisms underlying a particular behavior. Theories help organize and verify different observations related to the behavior and good theories will generate predictions about the behavior. A theory makes generalizations about observations and consists of interrelated coherent set of ideas and models. A theory is constructed to explain, predict, and master phenomenon. The theoretical framework is similar to the frame of the house, just as the foundation supports a house. A theoretical framework provides a rationale for predictions about the relationship among variables of a research study. The theoretical framework identifies the variables investigated in the study. It illustrates how the variables interact with each other as hypothesized in the research by the aid of diagrams. Theory provides patterns for the interpretation of data, links one study to another, supplies framework within which concepts and variables acquire special significance and allows us to interpret the larger meaning of our findings for our results and others. Theoretical framework states the central concepts integral to the study, connecting the study to theory. Theoretical framework may either be found in Chapter 1 before the statement of the problem. If a certain theory is exposed or to be proven, or in Chapter 2 
if the theory is to be formulated or developed as a result of the review of related literature. However, its location depends again upon institutional policy. Now let us proceed to the guidelines in using theoretical framework. First, always indicate the name of the theory or theorist, including its author and what the theory is all about. Second, indicate the applicability of the theory to the study. Third, if there are many related theories, select the nearest theory and explain its applicability to the present study. Four, as much as possible, map out or illustrate the theory. And the last one, do not include theoretical framework in the thesis if there is no theory involved or to be proven. So, here is an example of a theoretical framework. Read and analyze the given sample. A popular and validated method of assessing learning is the Cove's Learning Style Inventory or LSI, which allows comparison of learning styles. It measures both an individual's learning potential when placed in different environments and his learning style when challenged to acquire new materials. This method is based on the theory of experiential learning, separating learners based on the y-axis of information perception and the x-axis of information processing. Learning is thus divided into four stages, active experimentation, abstract conceptualization, concrete experience, and reflective observation. Ideal learning incorporates all four components, but individuals tend to have stronger preferences towards specific methods. Kolb established four categories of learning styles, diverging, assimilating, converging, and accommodating. Based on the given example, the Cove's Learning Style Inventory Method is based on the Experiential Learning Theory. That's all from now. Thank you and keep safe.